You have entered into the black hole of real estate, a place for industry news, tips, and strategies. Once you enter into our vortex, even if you could leave, you're probably going to want to stick around. I'm your host, Ron Weissakarski, and you are now entering the black hole of real estate. Well, I am excited to be back as we are moving towards the end of 2020 and you know what a year it's been. The numbers are rolling in. And with regard to um, end of the year, we're going to find that 2020, despite all of its twists and turns, will turn out to be a better year than 2019. Now, you know, who would have thought that? Uh, what I can tell you is that the condo numbers were, again, strong when you look at uh, what took place in November of 2020 compared to November 2019, as well as the prior months as well. So we're going to talk about that today. And then finally, we're going to talk about what's going on with Zillow and even Google because there's some interesting things taking place that a lot of people aren't aware of that has been kind of mulling in the background. So, you know, the first thing we want to talk about is the numbers for 2020. Again, who would have thunk it? With everything that's happened this year, you would think that the numbers would have been off from 2019. And it's just not the case. In fact, what we are seeing is that we have already exceeded the 2019 numbers. So how about that? If 2019 numbers in a really, really good year got surpassed by 2020 in a really, really mm, crazy year, you know, what's in store for 2021? You know, we have a vaccine out there and it looks like that is uh, being administered as we speak right now. So that should make a change in the market. And if that's available, does it mean that it's a little bit easier for sellers to come to terms with going on the market? and feeling safe and comfortable doing so because the inventory we've been missing and we've been missing it, believe me, is huge. There is pent up buyer demand, even with record sales. I can tell you in our brokerage, we have people that simply cannot find a property. They're ready to buy. The rates are low, the motivation is there, the money is there. They can't simply find something to buy. And that's the shadow inventory. This year's version of shadow inventory is people that want to sell their property, but realize by looking and what's available on the market, there just isn't a suitable property for them and their goals to go on the market. And if you can imagine that you want to move, you're ready to move, and you know that if you put your house on the market, it's going to sell quickly, you might only have a week or two to go find another place. And for many people, that's a compromise. So there's going to be this movement to getting more property on the market. And a lot of it naturally transitions after January 1st, and we're in that window. But think of all the people that would sell their home today if they knew where they could go to or if they had you know, four or five to choose from. We have a lot of clients that have zero or one homes <laughs> that, that they would actually consider making an offer on. And it's, it's not a confident feeling when they know that we can sell their property quickly. They, they know that's going to happen. But what about where they go next? We find that people are not looking for interim places. They don't want to move twice. They don't want to get a rental for a few months and, and ride this out. You know, They want to go from one home to the next, not have two moves or three moves or some complication or some uncertainty. And that's really what's playing right now in the inventory game. People are ready to move. We need more inventory. So I'll just keep saying that we need more inventory, but it looks like there's some on the way. And I think the vaccine actually is a big piece of the puzzle. Once people feel more comfortable about allowing people into their homes, I think you'll see more inventory coming to the market. Now, is it a little bit odd that the very same people that don't want anybody coming in their homes, at least that's their fear, are more than willing to go look at some properties and more than willing to go to grocery stores and restaurants and things, but we're not quite there yet on letting people in the homes. It, it, it remains a thing, but hopefully, Hopefully, with the new year coming and vaccines coming, that's that's going to change a little bit, and that's for the better. Now, let's talk about these condo sales. The November sales in the Daytona Beach market were super, super strong. And there's a couple of comparisons we can do. We can look at November of 2020 compared to November of 2019. So let's start there. You know, last November, in a hot market, 2019, 102 condos were sold with a median sales price of 229, which is awesome. Fast forward to this year, 152 sales in a median sales price of 260. So the sales are up 50, 
and about a $30,000 increase in the median sales price. Now, we always put a little asterisk next to sales prices in condos because it reflects all condos, whether it's a street view, a side view, or a direct ocean front, which goes for you know quite a bit more. But the median price is the middle. It's not the average. It's just the middle of all the sales. So that's a big jump in median sales price. Now, if we compare it to this October, just a month earlier, 204 sales going down to 152. And this is a normal transition because October sales are traditionally higher than November. And the median sales price actually went up a little bit. So less sales, but a higher median sales price from October to November of this year. So the kicker I want to give you, October is usually higher than November. Just said that. Well, October of 2019 had 146 sales. November of 2020 was supposed to be less sales. It actually had 152. So that should give you some context of just how strong this market is. The busier month of October was defeated by the slower month of November this year. So that's interesting to me. Now, when you look at the total number of sales, for condos in this market, in 2020, we crossed 1,650 sales year to date. And year to date in 2019, which is through the end of November, was 1,418. So it's more than 200 more sales. We're talking close to 15% more sales. I believe it was in that 12, 13% range. It's a big, big number. And we expect it to continue and widen that gap so I, I believe that we'll be in that 16% perhaps range by the end of the year, maybe 17%. It's just a lot more sales. If we didn't sell one more condo, we would have beat 2019. So how about that? 11 months for the price of 12. That's a, it's a really, really big, big number. Something to think about. As we get to snowbird season, I do believe there'll be increased activity. And there's a couple of reasons. The first thing is people will travel here. They may not travel as often by plane, but you know what? All the reports I'm hearing, the flying's been relatively easy and safe and a whole lot less crowded, so people are actually liking that. Uh, there's definitely people driving. I haven't really sorted out the whole thing if you're traveling from Canada, um, but I understand that they're going to come down, they can do their quarantine, and a lot of them stay for the whole season. So I think it's in the cards that they might still come down as well, but there's definitely energy. We, we have seen all year long that people have been able to work at a distance or remotely. And a lot of companies are they're getting very uh, open to the idea that you work in a, let's say, a New York company, but you live in Florida. You're working at a distance. A lot of people are actually able to keep their current employment and move to different states. Now, how about that? And if you can do that, every year we've had people pre-buying for retirement condos. And let's say that you're within five years of retirement but you're buying it now to use it as a rental? Well, the twist now is a lot of people are pre-buying their retirement condo, but actually moving into it now because they can still work at a distance. That's something we hadn't seen before, and that's a dynamic change. What might also increase the number of people coming into Florida real estate, right? I mean, right now, so many things are going well in Florida real estate, and people are noticing it, and they're coming, you know, coming to the state. I expect that to continue. So this will only add to the excitement. The moving parts are incredible. New construction. I've seen big projects coming you know, on board for, you know, for this area for the next year. Avalon Park is on the horizon. There's a lot. So you know, what, what's the next thing you know, that's, that's coming up? Well, let's take it to a national or even global scale. And let's think about what we see coming up in the future, whether it's for the way that real estate is transacted, well, how it affects the agent community and the consumer. You see, there's this company called Zillow, which has been the 10,000 pound gorilla for quite some time in the real estate industry. And they've made a big move in the last month. We've talked about it a little bit. They're going away from what they call a syndication model. And that is they're getting the data from all the various MLSs and they're syndicating it to put it on their website. And that was something that's been in a big, big conversation over the last five years, again, across you know, some of the big industry brokerage giants waging this war about who controls the data. Well, well, that game, if it wasn't over, it's over now. Zillow has joined as a brokerage pretty much every real estate board and every MLS in the country. So they're no longer going to syndicate those leads. They're actually going to get the IDX feed, the internet data transfer feed, direct from the MLS. 
So in essence, if Zillow joined every board, they don't really need the permission of the agents or the boards for the syndication anymore. So that's gone away. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means a couple of things. Number one, you're gonna get a lot more accurate data on Zillow, which has been something that's been argued back and forth for quite some time. It's just Zillow was highly inaccurate. They're getting the real data and the real feeds now. That's gonna make a big difference in the quality of the properties on the website. They've also made some super big moves to different programs such as the uh, Zillow Flex program that some of the bigger teams are taking advantage of and working in partnership with Zillow, but th things are changing and morphing. Zillow is still doing their offers, although not at the rate that they were in offering at lower prices. But the big twist coming up right now is companies like Zillow and Expedia, they've joined forces in this lawsuit against Google and the antitrust uh, conversation that's taking place right now. And I wonder, and I just wondered, is, is Zillow and some of these companies, are they biting the hand that feeds them? Um, this is going to play out in a, in a wild and crazy way because at, at some point, Zillow does control the placement. And if Zillow is buying ads on Google and Google controls the placement where those ads go and Expedia and all these other companies, uh, this is going to be a showdown. What happens with that? Does Zillow find a way to suppress those ads or push them further down the page or make the results not show up? You know, we had the syndication game where some MLSs and real estate boards did not want the data to go to Zillow so that they can have more control of their listings. Well, now the shoe is almost on the other foot. Are we going to find that Zillow is at the mercy of Google? Oh, isn't that an interesting situation? I don't know how it plays out. If you're an agent that spent a lot of time and energy working on the Zillow program. You know, people love that website. If, whether the realtors like it or not, it's, it's, it's here. I don't think it's going away. And it's all part of the real estate conversation. For the consumer, at the end of the day, we believe there's a better product out there on a con continually improving for the consumer. There's more data out there. There's more information out there. Yes, there's likely to be some commission compression in the industry. There's so many people uh, getting a bite at the apple and really taking a look at just how the whole transaction and the money that's involved in it is getting redivided. Is that a word? Well, it's a word today. Reallocated. It's a piece of the puzzle. I don't think it's going to chase anybody out of the industry that wants to remain in the industry and they'll adapt. Maybe they'll sell a few more homes, uh, maybe make a little less per transaction. I mean, that, that's life. I mean, that's what's, real estate's not the only industry feeling that. So it's the, I don't think it's that unique of a situation. What I do know is this. We are going to find an interesting battleground online for the bits and pieces of the real estate transaction. It wouldn't it be interesting someday to find out that people are buying homes off of, I don't know, Google or Amazon, like they buy groceries or, I don't know, <laughs> computers or software or camera stuff or pictures or anything else that we're buying. I don't think we're there yet or anytime soon. At the end of the day, I believe people do want the human interaction. They do want to see properties. So they, there is some value out there for agents to be able to show them the properties. And maybe it changes a little bit over time. I mean, everything evolves. I mean, if, if things didn't evolve, we'd still be, I don't know, we'd still be owning Betamaxes and VHS players, I guess, and listening to records. So, you know, we've survived, what, 100% of the things that have not gone our way in life, and we'll keep surviving that. Um, the good news is this, as we get to the end of the year, there's competition out there and it's going in every possible direction. And I think most of it is to the benefit of the consumer. And I believe in our industry, if it's good for the consumer, then it should be good for us. And if it's not good for the consumer, it can't possibly be good for us. So the real estate industry is uh, getting ready for the next big thing. And 2021 is gonna be different. And that's a good thing. Thanks for tuning in. This is Ron Wojcikarski for the Black Hole of Real Estate.